Hello everyone and welcome back to Morton's on the Move. I'm Tom and today we're talking about mobile internet. Now we've covered this topic in detail in the past, but technology moves really rapidly and today I want to talk about what's changed since that last video that I highly recommend you watch before this one if you haven't seen it yet, what's changed and how we use the latest technologies to get the best mobile internet possible and how you can do the same too to create almost an unbreakable mobile internet connection. So as I mentioned before, I highly recommend if you haven't watched our first video on this topic that you pause this video now and watch that video because I'm not going to be going into detail on all the different internet connection types available. In this video, we're really going to be focused on two primary internet connection types and how to get the most out of them. We're gonna be focused on cellular connections, which are still a backbone of most mobile connections and low earth orbit satellite, also known as Starlink. It's the only option out there right now, but it's incredible. In my previous video, we talked a little bit about Starlink and how exciting it was, but it wasn't available yet except for a few beta testers. Shortly after that video, we became beta testers and were able to start using it, and it has been incredible. Since then, though, it has exploded. If you go to almost any campground, you're going to see Starlink dishes. Starlink dishes are a small, they're currently rectangular dish. Here is our old ugh, beta unit. This is an amazing piece of technology in itself. What this is, is it's called a phased array antenna. Inside this antenna, there is actually thousands of little antennas that create an interference pattern together and are able to basically create a digital beam that shoots up into the sky to connect to low earth orbit satellites. Ugh, let's go ahead and put this thing down. Ugh. One of the drawbacks to Starlink is that it's not exactly as mobile as like a cellular connection. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but a little more on how it works. Low Earth orbit satellite technology means that the satellites are very low in the sky. We talked a little bit about this in the previous video, but because they're low, they have to move very quickly. They're constantly orbiting at a very rapid rate around the Earth to stay in orbit. This poses a big problem for actually connecting to them. And in the past, this would have been an almost impossible challenge because you'd have to constantly track the sky. But with these phased array antennas, we can actually create a digital beam and track those satellites. And how it actually works is it switches between all these different antennas and it switches from one pair that's pointed this way to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and it digitally tracks these satellites across the sky. And there's thousands of them up there now. Because of the way it functions, the dish does need to point kind of in the general direction of where the satellites are, and it makes it a little bit more challenged to track these satellites in motion. Now, all of this is changing. This dish that we have is really Gen 1. There is Gen 2, 3, a couple different generations, and you can also get high-performance satellite dishes. These satellite dishes allow you to track at a wider range, so it can actually track the satellites further and improve connectivity. You can even get an in-motion dish which can mount flat on your RV's roof and can track the satellites as they move while you drive or if you're on a boat while you're on the water. Now these in-motion dishes currently are very expensive but you can get them. WineGuard is the only reseller of them currently. However, uh, our friends over at Mobile Must Have, who provide almost all of our internet connectivity technologies, can provide these in motion dishes as well. When it's working, Starlink can provide some incredible internet speeds and low latency. Because those satellites are so much lower than the geostationary satellites in the past that were. 20 some thousand miles away, we're able to get really good latencies and the internet's fast enough that a lot of times we can hold video calls, we can hold audio calls and the latency is so low, latency meaning how long it takes to create that ping up to uh, the internet, up to the satellite, back to earth, that ping time, if there's too much latency, then you get delays and it can be really frustrating or not work very well. With these low latencies, we have some incredible internet, really good speeds too. We've frequently seen well over 100 megs. We've seen upwards of 
of four and 500 megs down at times. Most of the time it hangs around 30 to 40 megs with the plan that we're using, uh, like the RV plan, or you can get a uh, residential plan and enable roaming. Now I'm not gonna go into the details on all the plans because I'm sure they're gonna change. Starlink's plans uh, options are really changing very, very rapidly. But when you combine these together, they can form an amazing mobile internet source. And a lot of people are using it as their primary mobile internet on the go. However, there are still challenges with this internet system. And because of that, we really think that cellular connections are still required and can make the Starlink internet even better. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Now, most of the time, Starlink internet is something that people are going to set up at their location. And we have the existing little platform that it comes with that you can just set it anywhere. And that's great because you can, uh, it comes with a hundred foot cable and you can really move it well out and away from the RV, out and away from trees. Trees are a big problem for Starlink. If there are heavy branches, leaves in the way, you might not get a very good connection or it'll be very intermittent. So getting it out of from under the trees is important. If you're trying to get internet strictly from Starlink, the trees really may limit where you can camp. If you're in a state park that's fully wooded, you might not be able to get good Starlink internet at all. This is a particular challenge out more east, out in the west where it's all desert and open sky. This is usually a little bit easier. Also, mountains or rock formations, if you're up against like a cliff or something, you just may not get a clear view of the sky and it might not work very well. But being able to put that cable out a little bit further can be really beneficial. If you mount an antenna strictly on your roof, you might be more limited in where you can actually park. Some people actually modify these antennas so that they can be permanently mounted on the roof of the RV and you don't have to really worry about it, but then you lose the flexibility of being able to move it around. Our preferred technique of using it is to allow it to still be mobile, but we designed a very, very easy way to pull it out of one of the bays of our RV and install it on a pole that we can easily put up on the ladder on the back of our RV. This pole is another piece of equipment that mobile must have cells. It's a fiberglass pole that can extend, I think up to about 20 feet tall. It's really, really, really sturdy and designed specifically to carry the weight of Starlink and it's worked awesome for us. They also include these big suction cup mounts that you can suction cup it to a different part of the RV, but we have a flagpole buddy system, I think on the back of our ladder that we can just easily put this into. We can have Starlink installed up and running in really under a minute, which is awesome. However, it is still something we have to set up at campsites. It doesn't work while we're going down the road. This of course could change if you're using one of the very expensive in-motion dishes. With those in-motion dishes, however, you're limited to where you can park. So you can see that there are some challenges here with Starlink, and that's why it really isn't your all-inclusive, perfect internet solution. Yes, it provides great speeds, and you can get internet where you don't have anything else. We were down in the Baja Peninsula in Mexico, a lot of times had zero cell service whatsoever and had blazing fast internet with a clear view of the sky. We camped in some amazing places out in the desert. Again, zero cellular connectivity and had really great internet with Starlink. Highly, highly recommend having Starlink in your arsenal of mobile internet because it just has opened up where we can go and stay connected. One more drawback to Starlink is that it does tend to use more power. Now, our first gen equipment is more power hungry than some of the newer equipment, which is great, but Starlink also introduced a really awesome feature in the app that allows you to sleep the internet when you're asleep. So in the middle of the night, typically between midnight and 8 a.m., we sleep the internet and Starlink goes down and it saves us a lot of battery power when we are disconnected from shore. Typically, we've found that it runs between 60 to 100 watts when it's transmitting. It uses a lot of power, uh, but this is, again, our equipment. It's older equipment. The newer equipment tends to be more energy efficient. Now, all that said about Starlink, we would not get rid of our cellular connections. And the reason for that is 
there's always going to be those times when Starlink can glitch out or you're under trees, you don't have good connectivity, you're going down the road. Sometimes there's even congestion on the Starlink networks, uh, the RV plans, the roaming plans. You get deprioritized in certain areas. And yes, you can actually end up with congestion on the, the satellites, just like we can have with cellular connections. So we need something to fail over to and or provide the internet when we don't have Starlink. And the way that we're doing that is with a cellular connection. In the previous video, we talked a lot about how we do the cellular connections, and a lot of that is still relevant. Just like in the previous video, the very heart of our internet system is our router that allows us to bond our internet connections. This is our current router. We are using the Pepwave BR1 unit. This is a 5G unit, so we're actually able to take advantage of the latest cellular connections, although most of the time we are still only on uh, 4G connections. But what is so incredibly special about this router, and I, I really recommend the Pepwave routers for anyone who is wanting to create the most unbreakable internet they can have in a mobile setup, is that it has this uh, proprietary technology that allows it to actually bond different internet sources together. And what that means is we can take a cellular connection that uh, is actually inside this. There is there is actually um, SIM cards that you put inside these and you can get really any cellular plan that's designed to provide data will work in one of these. Mobile Must Have has a handful of different plans. We're using one of them as our primary. And these antennas here can connect to the cellular network. However, antennas are still a really big part of getting good cellular connection. In the past, we talked about the Parsec Husky that we're using on our, our roof, and, and we are still using that antenna. However, we're actually going to be using almost the same exact one, except this is the Parsec um, Akita, I believe it is, which has even more uh, connections on it, which is going to allow us to use our old router and our new routers to even put more cellular connection together. That really kind of goes beyond the scope of this video, but a good roof mounted antenna really, really helps improve your cellular connection. This is this, the antenna, as simple as it is, it has a big adhesive pad. You drill a hole in your roof, pull these wires through, and all these different wires here actually connect to where these antennas are. These just unscrew, and it's important that you have a router that can actually connect to an external antenna. A lot of cellular providers these days are offering a home internet or something that's designed to provide like a full unlimited internet, and those are great, but a lot of times they don't have any capability to connect to an external service, an external antenna, and that really limits their capabilities. Being able to connect to an external antenna and using the proprietary bonding technology that Pepwave offers really, really improves our connectivity across the board. What we do is we actually use the cellular connections, we use Starlink, and we even have another cellular connection that within the Pepwave system itself, you can bond them all together, and it takes all that traffic and it sends it to a particular location. You can think of it kind of like an internet pipe. It takes all your data, it puts it into this pipe and sends it over to a location. And then that bounces back to you as one solid stream. And it, it sounds kind of crazy. Basically, you duplicate data by doing this. You're using more data from your cell. You're using Starlink data at the same time. And you create a tunnel that create that if any one of those starts to have a problem, it doesn't really matter because all that data, it just drops these packets over here and it continues to come in a very solid connection. This really, really helps with video calls, with uh, phone calls, and just uh, general use. If you're streaming video, things like that, it creates a much, much more solid connection than cellular or Starlink alone. I want to briefly talk about how you actually set up one of those bonded networks because it might sound really intimidating to a lot of you, but it's really quite easy. And this is going to be really high level. Over at Mobile Must Have, they offer excellent training information. And if you want to actually do this, it's super easy and they'll walk you through it. But I'm going to talk briefly about how this is actually set up. Basically, when you get your Pepwave set up, it's going to broadcast a Wi-Fi network, and you can connect to that Wi-Fi network on any computer. And then on the Pepwave itself, when little startup instructions, it's going to give you a 
uh, an IP address that you type into a web browser. Go ahead and type that IP in, and it's gonna pop up with a login information for your Pepwave router. Now, basically, you're logging in directly to your router. Wherever it's located, you're logging into that. You're not going to the internet, you're going to the router. And you type in the login information, it's gonna provide you the password and everything. It's probably gonna ask you to change the password initially. And then you're going to be able to log in and see your dashboard. And inside the dashboard is going to be where you have your cellular connections, your Wi-Fi connections, and then also your, your WAN connections or the uh, Ethernet ports. And that's what these are right here. And this is how you connect Starlink and cellular connections together to create an even better connection. Starlink has its own router and it needs this because it controls the dish and it allows you to connect to its own internet and see all the information on your phone. This is how you can actually put your Starlink to sleep. You can set all the different like sleep times and uh, you can stow the dish so it goes flat so you can put it away. All of that's done from the Starlink app. However, you can just connect directly to that Starlink internet, but to get the most out of the internet system, bonding it with the cell is the best way to go. And what you can do is with the latest routers, they don't have a ethernet jack directly. You need to get an additional adapter to get ethernet out of it. But with ours, it actually has an ethernet jack and we can plug the ethernet directly into the WAN here. And what that does is it basically provides an additional internet source into the PEP wave. And once you're logged into that, dashboard, you can see all your different connections. You can see your cellular, whatever it has installed, whatever SIM card is in there. You can see your WAN, so that's that will be your Starlink if you have it plugged in via Ethernet. But there's also Wi-Fi options. And that's another thing that's amazing about these Pepwave routers is that they can actually rebroadcast Wi-Fi. So I don't even really think of Wi-Fi necessarily as a primary internet for mobile connections anymore. But sometimes you might have a campground Wi-Fi or you might be in a marina that has Wi-Fi. And if it's really good, there's no reason not to connect to it. And you can bond that into all your other internets as well. Or if you can't reach your Starlink router to your Pepwave router with the ethernet cord, you can actually just connect to it via Wi-Fi. You can use the 5G or even 2.4. You actually have two Wi-Fi connections that the PEP wave can connect to and rebroadcast that internet to you or bond that internet to all your other internets. So to reiterate, log into your networks, select what your connections are, and then you, you select them by priority. And priority one is the highest priority and everything needs to be in priority one that you want to bond together. So for us, we bond usually two cellular networks and Starlink when it is available. But Starlink's not always available for us. When we're going down the road, we don't really use it. So we bond a Verizon and an AT&T plan together to get the best internet we possibly can. But when Starlink's available, we bond that as well. So you select the internets that you want this to connect to, you put them in priority one, and then you select the Speed Fusion Connect tab. Luckily, PepWave has made it really easy to actually set this up. The first thing you need to do is choose your cloud location. There's a button here, you select choose your cloud location, and you can pick a location. Now, these are basically servers. You can pick a location that you want all your traffic to go to, and it creates what's called a virtual private network, a VPN, to that location. You can either pick one that's very close to where you are, or what I recommend is selecting just automatic. And it's gonna basically see which one has got the fastest response time, and it'll automatically select that as your bonding location. So you choose your cloud location, and then you're gonna have three different options in this traffic steering priority section to select how you want the traffic to connect to the cloud. You can optimize cloud applications. That really is if you're going to bond only certain things like um, uh, Google, Zoom, things like that to the cloud. But what you can also do is select a link Wi-Fi to cloud or connect clients to cloud. Now, your easiest option is gonna be link Wi-Fi to cloud. And when you do this, you're gonna be able to set up a specific Wi-Fi network that is bonded. This bonded network is gonna create a new Wi-Fi network that you can see that's coming off of the PEP wave and you're gonna be able to connect to that. So what you can do is you can choose whether you wanna to connect to the bonded network or the unbonded network. 
Why would you want to connect to the unbonded network if this fusion internet is so great? Well, the fusion internet is a, a, a through a VPN. And what we found is that if you're trying to stream video, a lot of streaming services, Amazon Prime, Netflix, etc., don't like when you connect through a VPN. And I, I think the reason for this is that people have been using it to basically get around geo restrictions so they can be in another country and they can watch content from yet a different uh, country. So they don't like it when you connect through a VPN and they can see that and they'll basically say, sorry, we're not going to connect to you. You're connected to a VPN. So you have to drop the, the bonded network for those certain applications. However, most of the time using the bonded network is going to be more stable and more solid. The last option on the list here is connecting a client to the cloud. And a client is uh, one of your additional outputs on your, uh, your, your, router here, one of these additional outputs through uh, Ethernet can be a, a client. So you could have this particular computer connected to one of those ports, and you can select that to be the only bonded client. Now we have kind of a weird situation where before we set up this newest setup, uh, our old uh, PepWave was not Wi-Fi 6, and it, it's uh, it was getting a little long in the tooth, and its Wi-Fi was a little bit slow. And with all the devices that we're running, the, the Wi-Fi actually throughput when we go from one device to the other was was too slow so we got an additional router before we got our latest pepwave router that brought us up to wi-fi 6 very very fast internal wi-fi connections so that has been our primary internet connection we also have a mesh network of routers that connect to that one and that is a client in itself so that router is connected to one of our our LAN ports here and that is a client of the router. So we just select that we want that router to be the bonded client. And all of the traffic going through our router, our secondary router, is bonded. So that's kind of a high level what the client means. Now all this bonded infused traffic might sound too good to be free, and that's because it is. Pepwave will give you quite a bit of free data, but it's not very expensive to actually buy this bonded data. So to actually buy this data, this bonded data, and use the servers, you do need to sign up for an account at Peplink's in-control system. Now, Peplink is the, the primary company that actually uh, offers these services for their PepWave routers. And this in-control system is where you can sign up to buy the data. And you can also see your router on the network anywhere in the world. You can see it through this in-control system and you can make changes to it. And this is really awesome for uh, people who manage fleets. A lot of times they'll use these systems in uh, uh, police cars, emergency vehicles, trucks. They can provide data to the users. They can also provide data back to a central location. And this is really designed for usually a lot of clients. So um, the in-control overview I'm going to let you head over to mobile must have to learn more about how to actually set that up, but you can even fumble through it yourself and it's not that hard to figure out. All you have to do is set up an account and they'll give you data for free most of the time, but buying data, uh, terabytes of data is just not that expensive. I've loved using this system to actually see what's been going on, how much data we've bonded and used and also see our travels. So this little thing right here actually comes with a lot of the routers. This is a GPS antenna. This antenna actually can track the location of this router at very high accuracy, and we can see where we've traveled, and if you had another one of these out in the wild, you could see wherever it is, and that's really kind of neat, all in the in-control platform. The in-control platform also can allow someone to remotely log in and help you with this system. And Mobile Must Have even offers services where they can do that, log in and help you get things set up, which is just awesome. We highly recommend Mobile Must Have for providing really the best internet technology out there and some of the best services when it comes to data and help along getting these things set up. Mobile Must Have has been a longtime partner of Morton's On The Move and Morton's On The Move subscribers, and they even offer a 5% discount to all of our subscribers using the code MOTM5 at checkout. So there you go. That is a brief overview of how to create the most unbreakable mobile internet system you possibly can. We've been using the bonded system for a couple years, but adding Starlink into it has just added 
another level of connection and enabled us to stay connected everywhere we go better than ever before. If you really need the top of the line, best connection you can have, this is the way to do it. As always, thank you so much for joining us here. I really want to encourage you to go over and sign up for our newsletter at mortonsonthemove.com. We've already shared most of this information to our subscribers over there. As a subscriber, you'll get the latest information. You'll get our latest articles, also updates about our latest giveaways and whatever else we've got going on. So we highly recommend that you sign up to our newsletter over at mortonsonthemove.com. Thank you so much for joining us. and We'll see you all down the road. Safe travels.